It's a it's senior, senior day, day matinee, matinee here inside, inside Extra Mile Arena as Boise State, State welcomes in conference foe Utah, Utah State, State and non-conference foe Oregon, Oregon State, State for the first time this season. season. And, and uh, a, a nice, nice little, little Sunday, Sunday afternoon meet. Welcome, welcome inside, inside, inside Extra Mile, Mile Arena. Arena. My, my name, name is Taylor Little and alongside myself is Alex Asperian and, and Hope Macedo is always. And ladies, we are nearing the end. Within the week, conference championships will happen all over the country. In fact, Boise State will head down to the home of Utah State, Logan, Utah, on Saturday for Mountain West. West Conference, Conference Championships, championships. And, and we're, we're like, like I said, said nearing, nearing the end, end. This, this is the final stretch. stretch. What, what do teams need to do to, to kind of like, like put the, the, the rubber stamp on the season? It's all, it's all about, about the details. details. I, mean, I mean, at this, this point, point, these girls have been competing weekend after weekend, weekend 10, 10 to 12, 12 meets. meets. So at so this, this point, point, we're expecting, expecting perfection, perfection, and they, they should, should be as well. The coaches are honing in on those little details. The weeks are short. The traveling sometimes is long. Injuries, injuries happen, happen so, they so they really have, have to step, step up. Sticks, sticks. We're, gonna we're gonna be really, really, really focusing on those landings. Um, it's, um, gonna it's gonna be a great, great matchup, matchup with number 17, 17 Oregon, a really, really good opponent, opponent coming in here. Highest ranked team we've seen so far in Extra, extra Mile Arena. And then, and then those, those Aggies will be seeing them next week as well. The Broncos travel down there, so it's gonna be a jam-packed afternoon. It'll be fun to watch. Alex, Alex, you mentioned the rankings. rankings. Let's, Let's take a look, look at them real, real quick. You, you also mentioned that Oregon State, State the highest ranked team to come into Extra Mile Arena this season. Just a few weeks ago, Washington had been that team. team. They, they were ranked number 19, 19 at the time. time. And you, and you see, see there, there the team NQS for Oregon, Oregon State, 197. Boise State, State just a few spots back with a 1966. And then Utah State brings up the rear 195, 575. When you get inside that top 30, at least this season, 197 seems to be kind of the high water mark. And, and if, if there's, there's a team, a team ahead, ahead of you, chances, chances are there may be a tenth, half of a tenth. If there's a team behind you, there's a tenth, half of a tenth. What, what creates, creates that separation, hope, between the teams in the top 30? Yeah, yeah like, like Alex, Alex mentioned, mentioned, those little details and little, little things, things around each event, event what's going to make you stand, stand out from the rest of the crowd? And I think we've had great success here at Extra Mile throughout the season, and we're excited if we see that light at the end of the tunnel for conference on Saturday. So... Good, Good vibes, vibes all around, around here today, today and we're excited. excited. Well, the well, Sunday day matinee, matinee also, also means it's senior, senior day. So, so we'll, we'll have quite, quite a lot of gymnastics. We'll get to say bye to some of the seniors, seniors on this Boise State, State squad. squad. Boise, Boise State, State will start, start off rotation, rotation number one on, on the vault, as they, they always do. do. We'll, we'll be right back with rotation number one on the Mountain West Network right after this. Stay with us. Back, Back here inside, inside Extra, Extra Mile Arena as we, we get, get ready, ready for rotation, rotation number one. Boise State, State will start, will start the, the afternoon out on the vault. Oregon, Oregon State, State will start things off on, on the floor. floor. And Utah State, State will begin rotation, rotation at number one on the bars. bars and uh, unlike, unlike some, some of our, our other home meets this, this year where we've, we've sort of kind of gone back and forth, a little give and go with the rotations, today we're not going to do that. Everything is happening simultaneously, so we will do our absolute best to bring, bring you all of the routines, routines that we possibly can, can today, today, though it may be a little bit hectic. hectic. So, so Boise State, State um, just, just one, one week, week left here in the 2024, 2024 season, season, as we mentioned in the Open, open Conference, Conference Championships, championships coming, coming up on Saturday. Saturday. Utah, Utah State on a bit of a short week. week. They've competed they twice, twice now in three days. days. They competed just last Friday night, and then they'll go home and, of course, post-conference championships in Oregon State. We mentioned will be participants in the Pac-12 Conference Championships in a week's time. They compete on the 23rd, and it'll be the last time that we see the Pac-12 in its current form as we see Emma Lauren, or excuse me, Sydney Coe go on vault for the Broncos. She started with a really nice Yurchenko full, a lot of power, just that hop back on the landing, but a good solid start for the Broncos. This is Utah, Utah State's Avery, Avery Bibby, Bibby on the bars and, and Oregon State's, State's Caitlin, Caitlin Garcia on the floor. She had a she had great, great handstand hand to start, start off with, with right into that Tkachev. Right transitions, transitions down, down to, to the, the low, low bar. bar. Nice, nice handstand, handstand there, there, and she'll, she'll finish, finish it up, up with a double layout. layout. Couple, couple steps, steps back, back on that, on that landing, landing, but great routine to start off that bar rotation. rotation. And we just and we saw just a really nice one and a half punch layout on the floor. floor. Fun, Fun routine to start, to start things, things off. off. Elena, Elena McGovern, McGovern on the right, right hand, hand side of your screen, screen on vault for the Broncos. Elena will be doing 
that you're changing, changing full as, as well. well. Good landing, landing kept your feet together. together. Maybe, Maybe just a little, little bit crunched, crunched on, on that, that table, table, but she has, she has a lot, a lot of, power, of power, so, so she, had she had no, no problem, problem getting, getting that one around. around. Sky high, high double, double back. back. Maybe pops out, out of it a little, little bit earlier, that awkward, awkward landing, landing, but nice, nice first routine for, for the, beavers the Beavers on the floor. floor. You see that ball one, one more time. time. She, she was a little bit back, back on the table, table but again, again she has so, so much power, power that she was able to maintain her good form. And just a slight hot back on that landing. So while we wait here, it should be mentioned that Sydney Coe matches her career best with a 9.775. You'll see those scores pop up on the left-hand side of your screen, along with a running team total on the bottom of your screen. So you'll be able to catch up with everything that's going on, even if you miss a routine or two. You'll at least see scores. We'll try to show as much as we can. So Adriana Pop now set to go for the Broncos on vault. Utah State's Danny Kirstein getting set to go on bars. And Carly Chavez for Oregon, Oregon State, State getting, getting the mats, mats set, set on the floor. And Pop, Pop has, has a unique, unique vault. She does, she does that, that front, front takeoff, take off huge power. power. I would say I that's one of her best vaults vault we have seen this season. season. She, she does, does that, that half twist out, out. gives her that 10-0 start, start value. value. And they'll, and they'll show, show it one more time. You can see how high she pops off that table, which we just love using that. Because it's her last night. Right, right here, here. Nice, nice entry, entry. Exactly, exactly where you want to be on the table. table. Front, Front end of it for that, that ball, ball and really, really, really good, good job, job from her. her. So this is Carly Chavez, Chavez on the left-hand left left hand hand side of your screen. screen. Utah, Utah State's, State's Danny Kirstein, Kirstein on the bars on the right-hand right side of your screen. screen. Start off here with a Maloney. Right down to the low bar to get that connection bonus. A blindfold, blindfold, double, double tuck, tuck. quick routine, on and off, off but pretty, pretty solid, solid throughout. throughout. Second routine up on floor for the Beavers. Boise State's, State's Alyssa Bulai now on the right hand side of your screen, getting set to vault. Alyssa, Alyssa will do will another, another unique ball. She has that Yuchenko full tuck off. off. Possibly, Possibly supposed to be a pike, but, but she decided, decided to do, to that, do that, tuck, that tuck, made it, made it around, around nice and clean. clean. You'll, You'll see, see her one, one more time. time. Full, full on tuck, tuck off. off. She's right, right on that, that line. line. So, so nice, nice job, job from Melissa. And a really and nice routine happening on floor, floor right, right here. here. Super, Super powerful. powerful. Started, Started out with that, that big, big double, double pike. pike. Headed into, into that, that final, final tumbling, tumbling pass. pass. A lot of the gymnasts, gymnasts now will do, will do two, two tumbling, tumbling passes, passes. Um, but, but when they, they do, do a third, a third it's, it's that, that extra, extra added, added obviously, obviously challenge, but it can be a good, a good reward, reward at the, at the end. end. So, so she'll, she'll head into her final pass, pass double, double back. back. A little bit of a forward landing on that, but it managed to keep it on her feet. This is Utah, Utah State's Lexi Aragon on the right hand side of your screen on the bars, and Emily Lopez just popped into the left hand side of your screen. She's getting set to go for the Broncos on ball. She had a great start there. Huge to Kochev on the high bar. A little, little short, short on that handstand. Hand stand. We, we talked, talked about, about earlier those, those details, details and how you're going to separate, separate yourself from other teams. teams. So, so it's really, it's really important, important that you hit those handstands, stick, hand stick, stick those landings to, to get those, those extra, extra tents. And speaking of details, she is the queen of details. She stuck that landing and you'll see on the replay, she stuck with her feet together, which is extremely, is extremely challenging, challenging to do. It's, it's not, not necessary, necessary, but that's, that's just, just how perfect Emily, Emily is. We'll, we'll see, we'll one, see more one more time in slow-mo right, right here. here. Just, just all the way down, down to her toe point, point. perfect. perfect. And then and she's, she's stuck, stuck it cold. cold. She's, she's in the middle of those lines. lines. I mean, I don't, I don't know what they're going to take on that. It was amazing. So as you look at the scores there on your screen, you saw that Adriana Pop with a 9.85 just a little bit ago. That ties her season best on the vault. The next Bronco to go on this event will be Emma Loyam, but she's got a little bit here yet to go. On floor, 
We'll see Savannah, Savannah Miller, Miller from, from Oregon, Oregon State, State and on the bars. We'll see Amari Evans, Evans from Utah, Utah State here in the middle of rotation, rotation number one. one. So fast, fast and furious, furious here, here on, on a, a Sunday, Sunday matinee. matinee. And Emma Loyam set, set to go. go. She's going to do a half for her ball. Nice, nice guy high. high. Woo! Hung, Hung on to it as well. You can see the reaction in her teammates and her coaches. Um, that's, um, that's a really, a really hard, hard landing. landing. Whenever, Whenever you have to land, to land in a half, half position, position, whether it's a half or a one and a half, it's blind landing. It's an awesome, awesome job from Emma. And a great, a great start, start for the Aggies, Aggies, Aggies on bars. bars. She's, She's a really strong, strong bar, bar swinger. swinger. You, you can, can tell. tell. A little short, short on that handstand there. And she'll do that blindfold double tuck to finish. Now, now on the, the floor, floor Oregon, Oregon State, State doing, doing well, well so, so far. far. Heading into, into that, that second, second pass, pass right, right here. here. Takes his second gears, gears up, up for, for it. it. Nice, nice double tuck. <laughs> Throws her hands <laughs> down. Shows the judges she nailed that landing. landing. She doesn't, she doesn't even use the, the optional, optional mats, mats that, you that you can put, put on the floor, floor which, which kind of just softens, softens the blow. These girls have been competing, competing for weeks after weeks, after weeks and, and I mean, and it's, it's not, not an easy sport, sport on your body. body. All, All of these, these hard, hard landings, landings, they try, they try to, minimize to minimize as many as, many as they as can in practice, but, but when it comes to the meat, it's not much mercy out there. There's some spring and some give in the floor, but it's pretty tough on those ankles. Really nice routine. Savannah Miller on the floor for the so Savannah Miller wraps up for Oregon State as Utah State's, State's uh, Juliet, Juliet Boyer gets, gets set to go on the bars. The Broncos on vault done, done with, with this rotation. rotation. So you see all the scores there. Emily Lopez, Lopez leads the way for Boise State, 9925. Huge vault from, from Emily for the Boise State, State Broncos, Broncos today. Yeah, and that vault is only out of a 9.95, so it was pretty perfect. One of the judges gave it to her, that perfect score. Um, and one of the judges saw something a little bit different, but regardless, that is an amazing score for her on her senior night. Day. <laughs> Day <time. laughs> Oregon State's Sage, Sage Thompson, Thompson, Thompson getting, getting set for floor, floor in rotation number one. one. Really, really looking forward to see the, the Beavers on bars. bars. They're, They're currently ranked number seven, seven in the country on that event. Top 25, Top 25 in all four apparatus, apparatus but, but uh, uh, very, very excited to see what this team has for us on bars. But first, let's take a look at Utah State's Julia Boyer on bars. She just flew to that high bar on that Maloney. Super, Super aggressive. aggressive. Beautiful, Beautiful handstand, handstand there. there. Did that, that blindfold, blindfold double tug. Chest, chest was a little low on that landing. landing. You'll, You'll notice when gymnasts do the pirouetting, they, they want to land, land on top, top of the bar. bar. They, they only have a 10 degree, degree window, window for error, error. but, but you, you want to achieve handstands hand on everything. So doing those pirouetting skills is super difficult. But, but she was, she was able, able to, to nail, nail it. it. So this, this is, is Oregon, Oregon State's State Sage Thompson, Thompson now on the floor. Sage, Sage transferred to the, to the Beavers, Beavers from University, University of Utah. Utah. Almost, Almost went out of bounds there. there. I think you, you can, can touch, touch the white line, line but, but once, once you go, go over, over it, it, so her foot slid, slid onto, onto the white, but I don't, I believe she's kept it in. Oregon State's such a fun team to watch. Super powerful. They've always been really good on these more powerful events. A lot of talent on this team. We'll set up here for that second pass. Beautiful double pike. Amazing form in the air. You can even tell by her toe point. And this season, Sage has not scored under, other than one meet, under a 9.85. So very impressive. This is Utah State's Brianna Brooks on the left-hand side of your screen. Huge connection there. She, 
She has a beautiful, beautiful lines, lines, and you can, can tell, tell in those, those handstands. Hands and put, put that, that exclamation point, point on that routine, that routine with that beautiful, beautiful stick. stick. Amazing, Amazing routine, routine to close, to close out, out the bar, bar rotation, rotation for the Aggies. Aggies. We'll, we'll see, see that. that. She had a beautiful stretch, stretch position, position in the air and, and was, was able, able to stick those feet down. down. So that, so that is, is the final Aggie, Aggie to go on bars, bars actually check, check that. We will have, have one exhibition that will be Angel Stewart, Stewart coming, coming up here shortly, shortly for the Aggies, Aggies as, as Oregon, Oregon State's Ariana Young, Young the, the fifth gymnast, gymnast to go for the Beavers, Beavers. is getting set to go on floor. You see her on your screen right now. So Boise State real quick, three gymnasts score or match career best in this rotation. You see them right there. Some of those scores. Uh, very, 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 very high. high. Sydney Coe, 9775 matches a career best. best. Adriana Pop ties a season best with a 985. Emily Lopez, Lopez ties her career best with a 9925. And Emma Loyam, 9875, records a career best. best. This, this is, is the best, best that the Broncos, Broncos have done on vault this season, 49225. You see there on your screen. So a Welcome, Welcome addition to the scoring lineup, lineup here for Boise State, State with a 49 or better on this apparatus. It's, it's all about, about those landings. I mean, you saw really, really good landings from the final two performers, performers and that seriously, seriously makes, makes the difference. difference. So Utah, Utah State's Angel, Angel Stewart, Stewart on the bars, bars in exhibition. And of, and of course, course Ariana Young, Young for Oregon, Oregon State, State on the floor. floor. It's, it's great, great to see these ladies' exhibition so late into the season because you, you never, never know what's going to happen, happen and you're going to get your, get your opportunity, opportunity to step up and be a part, part of that lineup. lineup. So, so it's, it's great, great that these ladies are getting the experience and the exposure, and the exposure to, to what it's, it's like, like to compete. Ariana had a huge first two passes, passes. Huge, huge double pike, pike. almost went out of bounds, but it is uncanny when these girls know exactly where they're at. She lifted her heel to make sure she didn't go out of bounds and then had another huge double back. Showing, showing awesome, awesome power. power. And this, this is, is for most teams, teams assuming, assuming that this is their last, last regular, regular season meet, the, the last, last competition, competition they can do those exhibitions. exhibitions. So, so like, like Hope, Hope said, said, getting that practice, practice there's, there's nothing, nothing quite, quite like doing it out in front of a crowd on the competition floor. You can't really simulate that in practice. So it's good for them. And again, you never know what's gonna happen. She heads into her final pass right here, front pass. Front, front layout, layout to, to a full, it's a little, a little bit under, under but, but she managed to keep it because she's very, very powerful. powerful. Awesome Let's job for the, the Beavers. So Utah, Utah State, State is done with rotation, rotation number one. Boise State, State is, is done with rotation, rotation number one, but, but Oregon, Oregon State, State still has one more gymnast to go. Uh, actually, actually in their lineup and then one, one exhibition. So the sixth gymnast for Oregon State will be Sofia Esposito. Taylor, Taylor DeVries, DeVries will be competing, competing in exhibition for the Beavers. And Boise State, State and Utah State are going to kind of get a little bit of a head start moving from event to event here. Uh, Boise, Boise State has sat now for the last two or three floor routines, routines and just watched Oregon, Oregon State, State, which I think is a little bit different. different. You have you this have big wall. You're, you're just kind of waiting and waiting and waiting mm -hmm. to sit through three, four floor routines before you move on to the next thing. It'll get them ready for that postseason when they do have buys in their rotations when there's at that Probably not, not at the conference, conference level. level. Some, some, I'm, I'm sure, sure some, some conferences, conferences, but when they get, get to regionals and nationals, there's, there's going to be more, more than four teams competing. competing. So, so it's, it's good practice. practice. I, mean, I mean, that's, that's the hardest, hardest part, part, I think, in, in some cases, cases is just, just sitting around and waiting. waiting. You, you get, get cold, cold. Especially, especially, I mean, I, I competed balance beam and floor mostly, and those are the last two rotations in a home setting. So you just have to keep yourself warm. You'll see them doing jumps, and sometimes we have bikes set up or Whatever, whatever, but it, but it is, is good practice, practice for them to kind of sit around and wait and, and be able, able to handle, handle that added, added obstacle. Yeah, yeah. well, well and at, at, least, at least today, today they're, they're able, able to move around, around a little bit. bit. Normally, Normally when you go to a regional setting, setting, you're in a corral, you're, you're legitimately, legitimately like, like shoulder to shoulder with your teammates. So you can try to stay as warm as you possibly can, but there's something about just being packed in there that maybe makes it a little more claustrophobic. There you go, Broncos in a corral, it's home for them. So this is Sofia Esposito, the sixth gymnast to go for the Beavers on the floor in rotation number one. Wow, really nice. Rudy, you want to see, see that, that in a double salto pass, pass like that. You want to see, see the first one, one and, then and then the second, second one lift even more. And she did a great, great job, job right, right there. there. 
beautiful leap pass. <laughs> Love that our OSU team is getting into it. Does it, it out of the round, round off, off, which is harder because you're not generating as much power and you're coming out of that sideways move. So, awesome, awesome job, job right there. there. So, so much power. power. Fun routine to watch. So, so one more. That, that is a chainsaw. 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 So, so one, 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 one more routine, routine left for Oregon, Oregon State. State. It'll, It'll be Taylor DeVries competing in exhibition for the Beavers. If you're not familiar with Oregon State, the chainsaw represents just Beavers. Oh. Always cutting, cutting down, down trees. trees. So, so <laughs> usually when you're in Reese Stadium, stadium uh, for, football for football games, you hear the chainsaw, chainsaw rev every, every time they get a first down or something uh, like that. So the chainsaw, chainsaw very much uh, not a friend of the Stanford, Stanford Cardinal, Cardinal uh, whose uh, mascot, mascot, of course, is a tree. tree. So it <laughs> uh, doesn't, doesn't matter, matter how much you fear the tree, if you have a chainsaw, that's a pretty easy battle there. I think a couple years ago it became trendy to have some sort of stick item that, that was held up or if you just had a really, really exceptional routine you got, got handed it. Broncos, Broncos have a hammer. I know, I know some, some teams, teams do a crown. And now, and now we got, got a chainsaw, chainsaw on the mix. So getting, getting creative. creative. Well, you know, you what, know they what they say, the beaver, beaver is nature's, nature's chainsaw. chainsaw. I, think I think somebody, somebody said that <laughs> once. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who's he said? <laughs> so Taylor DeVries nearly set to go for Oregon State. Competing in the exhibition. This will be the final routine for the beavers in rotation number one. And, and all, all eyes, eyes on, on her, her. Finish, finish out this first rotation. rotation. Really nice, nice form, one and, one and a half into that front, front pole. pole. And that's, that's a super, super difficult, difficult combination, combination pass. pass. You're going, You're going from, from backwards, backwards twisting, twisting into, into forwards forward twisting. twisting. And, and another. <laughs> Twisting, twisting, tumbling, tumbling pass, pass, beautiful, beautiful two, and two and a half there. there. You can you tell, tell when a gymnast is a, a twister, twister, as we, we like, like to call them, and she definitely is. Sometimes, sometimes, they, got sometimes they got it both, both but sometimes, sometimes you, just you just like, like to, to twist, twist a little bit, bit more, more than flipping. flipping. And these and gymnasts these are actually spotting while they're in there, so not two and a half twists. It's really, really difficult to do, but she is spotting her landing the entire time. Last time I passed us one of her teammates, teammates in the corner, corner and like, like Taylor, Taylor mentioned, mentioned being, being in a crowd is really, really tough, tough when you come to postseason. Ends off with that Rudy a little bit short on that twist, twist but keeps keep it on her feet. Nice, nice exhibition routine. routine. So, so that, that will wrap, wrap it up for rotation, rotation number one. You see the team scores unofficially, of course, at the bottom of your screen. But let's take one more look at this ball from Emily Lopez in a 9925. Just perfection, perfection right, right here. I mean, chest, chest up on that landing. landing. I think it, it kind of shocked, shocked her. her. I mean, you're never you're really anticipating that stick. stick. You're letting the floor come to you, but amazing job. Emily Lopez, Lopez leads the way. We'll be back with rotation. Beautiful right there, and we saw it a couple times before we went to break. It just can't see that enough. I mean, that is technically perfect. And then it was Utah State's Brianna Brooks with this 9-9 on the bars in rotation number one. She was beautiful throughout the routine, great handstands, had a huge connection in the beginning. And as always, you want to see that stick on that dismount on the end, which she did, and that was awesome. And finally on the floor, Oregon State had a two-for-one. It was Caitlin Garcia and Sofia Esposito with these 9-9 routines for the Beavers. And Caitlin, Caitlin led them off, which is really, really, really hard, hard to get a 9-9 nine, nine in that leadoff position. position. So, so it just shows, shows you how awesome, awesome that routine was. was. And then that, that second routine, routine as well, just so much power, power looked effortless. So in, so in rotation, rotation number two, two Boise, Boise State, State will make their way over to the bars. bars. Utah, Utah State, State will be on the beam and Oregon State on the vault. As we mentioned, Oregon State ranked in the top 25 in every single event. But their bread and butter is coming up actually next, where they're ranked number seven in the country. One, One of their, their uh, counterparts, counterparts in the Pac-12 is also, was also ranked, ranked in the top five. five. That would be Cal. I believe they're, they're still, still currently number three on that event. event. So, so 
really good at bars schools, schools in the Pac-12, Pac which, which is uh, not all that unsurprising with the likes of UCLA, UCLA. Um, of course, Oregon, Oregon State, State. Washington, Washington, we saw, had it some huge floor routines a few weeks, weeks ago. ago. So the, the Pac-12, which, which is in its last year of existence as far as gymnastics goes, going out with a bang. Yeah, they always do well. Always been a really competitive conference, and sad to see them go, but these teams, teams will get, get placed in other conferences, conferences and uh, they'll, they'll keep, keep getting, getting better. better. I mean, it's, 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 it's you, you level, level up to your opponent, opponent so, so it's, it's fun, fun to have challenging teams, teams, teams that are really, really good really come in here, and even if they're not in your conference, conference having, having teams like Oregon State, State like Washington, like Washington come, come into Extra Mile Arena, Arena, it makes these, these other teams, teams better and level up to that standard. So this is Natalie Briones, who will lead things off for the Beavers on the vault. Getting, getting things started, started for Boise, Boise State, State on the bars will be Malia Werlein, and, and on the beam for Utah, Utah State will be Sydney Jellin. She does that ear go full, really nice landing, clean in the air, exactly, exactly how you want to start. start. And Malia started off her routine with that Maloney, right, right down, down to, to the low bar with that pack salto. salto. Malia's done a great, great job, job of starting, starting off the Broncos, Broncos strong, strong on this event. event. Wow. wow, great finish for Malia. Malia. I, think I think that was, that was the best routine I've seen her compete. Just totally, totally handstands, handstands and, and that, that stuck, stuck landing, landing, I'm, I'm telling you, that's, that's gonna, gonna be the decision, decision maker. maker. Those, Those details, details are super important. important. So once again, again City Jellin on the right hand, hand side of your screen, screen. Oregon, Oregon State's State Sage Thompson, Thompson on the left, left hand side of your screen, screen. Ready, ready to go, go for the Beavers on vault momentarily as she gets, she gets the flag to salute. And Sydney finishes off with that side gainer full, just a little step. Really powerful vault. Uh, I don't know if you could see it from your angle, but she actually punched a little bit on the horseshoe mat surrounding, surrounding the board, board and to be able to keep that ball on, on her feet and even a little bit over rotated. So, so much power involved there. there. So Boise State, State will see Carly, Carly Buell, Buell in the bars, bars line up here momentarily. You'll see, see this ball one, one more time. time. Not really far back on that board, but she, she makes it work. And that's not a production. I mean, they're they're judging the flip of the form, the landing. The way she gets to the table. Not, Not really, really that, that important. important. Next up on the for Oregon State, Caitlin Garcia. So Caitlin Garcia on the left hand side of your screen for Oregon State on the vault. Once again, Carly Buell on the right hand side of your screen on bars for Boise State. State. And, coming and coming up very, up very shortly, shortly on the beam for Utah, Utah State, State will be Jenna Eagles. Eagles. She floated through that vault. I mean, she was kind of jogging by us on that vault runway. And Again, Again, if you, if you have, have the correct, correct angles in gymnastics, in gymnastics you, you let, let the equipment, equipment work, work for you, you know exactly how to work through this. Right, right there, there, you see, see she gets, gets to her, her feet, feet and just, just that, that slight pop back. back. Carly will set, set up, up here. here. Great, Great handstand. handstand. Another, Another Maloney right, right down, down to that. that. Shoot, Shoot over to the low bar. bar. Carly is, is one, one of three, three freshmen, freshmen in this Bronco, Bronco bar lineup. We've, We've seen, seen her a few, few times this season on this event, and, and she, she has, has been, been showing, showing up, up, as, as you, you can, can see. see. Beautiful position in the air. Just, just that small hop back, back but great, great routine for the Broncos. Ariana Young, Young on the right hand side of your screen. screen. Huge wow. ball. I was, I was watching, watching her warm up, up and, and just, just I, can't I can't speak, speak enough to the power that this Oregon State, State team has. It's, it's really remarkable. And again, she kind of just floats through, through that full twist. twist. Looks, Looks like she could do a more challenging, more challenging ball, ball as well, flares it out and, and finds the landing. landing. So, once so once again, again Jenna Eagles on the left hand side of your screen, Boise State. Victoria Smirnov will be on screen here very, very shortly as she is adjusting some of the bars, bars around a little bit in Oregon State flying through their vault, vault routines, routines today. Vault, vault scores coming, coming very, very quickly, quickly so they'll, so they'll have, have a little bit of a lull now before, before they make their way to bars. bars. But, but that just, just mount there. there. Just, just a slight hop. So one more look 
at Jenny, Jenny Eagles. Eagles. That one has just a little bit of form and, and the tiniest, tiniest shuffle, shuffle of the feet. feet. So this is Oregon State. Sophia Esposito, Esposito on the left-hand left side, side of your screen. screen. Big Yurchenko full, one after another. Good landing, maybe just a little bit of a hop. Victoria returns to the bar lineup. She had a mid-season injury, injury she had to take care of, and she has tons of difficulty throughout her routine. You'll see she did in, in Super, super hard on your shoulders, shoulders and, and very, very impressive, impressive that, that she's doing it at this level. Just classically trained, you can tell. Really, really hard, hard dismount, such a blind landing. landing. Beautiful, Beautiful routine, routine from, from Victoria. Victoria. So you are looking now at Amari Evans, Evans the junior, junior from McKinney, McKinney Texas, Texas, getting, getting set, set to go, go on B4 for Utah, Utah State. State. Oregon, Oregon stage, stage Jade Carey getting, getting set, set to go on vault. First look at her tonight. Again, as Hope mentioned, Jade was on the Olympic team. So fun to have her in the building. And she does the biggest Chuchenko full I think I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> she is capable of doing an Aminar, which adds on a full and a half to that. So she can do a two and a half twisting your Chenko, so, so this, this is, is honestly, honestly a walk in the park for her. You see just perfect, perfect technique, technique, huge pop, she flares, flares out to find that landing. landing. Awesome, awesome to see. So, so impressive. Elena McGovern, ready, ready to go, go on bars, bars for Boise State. State. She'll, She'll pop into the left hand side of your screen, screen right next to Amari Evans, Evans for Utah, Utah State, State on the beam. beam. Amari doing a really nice routine so far. Good leaps and jumps we just saw there. It's into her front aerial back handspring series. Forward to backwards, gotta make sure you keep those arms moving. She did a nice job of that. Elena had a huge connection to start off her routine. Pulled in a little bit on her release move. It's called a ginger, and then had to tr transition directly to the low bar. One and a half on ball, really nicely done. That was, that was Oregon, Oregon State's, State's Olivia, Olivia Buckner, Buckner competing, competing in exhibition for the Beavers. First one and a half we've seen tonight, and that is a 10-0 start value. She did a really nice job in that ball. So Danny Kirstein will be next to go on beam for Utah State as Amari puts on the St. Patrick's Day chain. And up next, on the bars, the bars, we'll see Kylie, Kylie Hamby for Boise, for Boise State. State. We, we saw her in the lineup just a few weeks, weeks ago when Washington, Washington was in town. town. Put, together Put together a pretty, pretty solid routine, routine in her last go out, out, at least here inside Extra Mile Arena. Arena. Quite, Quite a switch, switch up for, for the Broncos, Broncos this weekend, week in their bar lineup. lineup. So, so they're, they're doing an awesome, awesome job with some of the newer faces to the team that haven't gotten as much competition time. So it's really fun to watch people stepping up and. I mean, I mean, we talked talk to Coach Bird about, about how they all have each other's backs. backs. They're, They're a super supportive uh, team, and they, and they make, make each other better, better every day in practice, practice. So, so it's really cool, cool seeing that come to fruition. fruition. Kylie, Kylie has, has been, been a consistent, consistent competitor in this bar lineup. lineup. She's, she's only, only a sophomore, sophomore but, but you'll, you'll see in her routine, routine she's, she's a very aggressive bar swinger. In her first release move, it's called a ray. She'll gain a lot of amplitude and then go right to the low bar. Pulled in a little bit. So it was tough to pull out that transition to the low bar, but she was able to do it. Hangs on to it, I love it. She is a fighter for sure. Rather than taking that step back, I mean, that's what you want to see these gymnasts do. She just trusted it, held on, and kept those feet from moving. Beautiful, Beautiful double, double layout. layout. <laughs> You'll see, see Yvonne, Yvonne Alexov does, does a great, great job with these girls and making sure that they're, they're getting, getting that confidence they need in practice in order to execute when they come, come to the competition, competition floor. floor. Bars, Bars has always been 
um, not, not just, just on the athletic, athletic side, but on the coaching side with Neil Resnick, Resnick prior, prior to Yvonne. To Yvonne. They've, they're, they're, just they're just really, really, really well-trained coaches, coaches especially, especially on this on event. event. They, they know what they're, they're doing. doing. So, uh, really, really well-trained well team, team, and you can, you can see, see it in their, their technique, technique and their, their form. form. It, it shows. One more Bronco yet to compete, and that'll be Emily Lopez to round things off on bars for Boise State in rotation number two. And, of course, Danny Kirstein is on your screen right now for Utah. For the Aggies on beam. Try to wait a little bit, which is always nerve-wracking, especially on balance beam, but it's just how it happens sometimes. So some people stand there, wipe their feet. She kind of was singing and moving around a little bit, but she gets to go now. Emily, Emily will start, start off, off here, here with, with a beautiful, beautiful Pike Jaeger. It's, it's so, so bittersweet, bittersweet to see Emily. Emily. Oh, oh, went, went for, for that, that handstand, handstand. Unfortunately, unfortunately, had, had fallen, fallen over. over. She'll, She'll chalk, chalk up, up and collect, collect herself. herself. Just, Just hung, hung on to that, that high bar a little, little too much. much. Danny doing a nice, nice job, job on beam. Good, Good side, side aerial. aerial. Emily, Emily will wrap, wrap up, up here with a double layout. You know, Emily, Emily has, has been a consistent, consistent performer, performer for the Broncos, for the Broncos and, and that fall only, only shows that, that she's human. human and. and it, it happens, happens, you know, you know but, but like, like Alex, Alex mentioned, mentioned earlier, these, these girls, girls have each other's backs and that support. support. So, so Emily, Emily will, will shake, shake it off and move, move on, on to the next, next event. event. Just a little, a little off. off. We, we all had those, those days. days and it's, it's tough, tough because she's so good. And we, we always see hit after hit after hit. You start to expect it. And that's a lot of pressure on one person. And Having, having an off, off day is, is totally, totally normal. normal. We, we are, are all human, human as, as Hope said. said. And so she'll, she'll come, come back stronger. I know she'll be disappointed in that, but that'll just give her that, that, that fire going into postseason post that she needs to uh, get, get back, back on track. track. So, so no, no more Broncos, Broncos left, left in rotation, rotation number two. two. No, no more Beavers, Beavers left in rotation number two. Just a few more Aggies left, though, on the beam as you take a look at Brianna Brooks, who's getting set. And then we will follow her with Lexi Aragon the senior from Salt Lake City, Utah. A little uncharacteristic, as you guys said, from Emily, but she's got a week to kind of get sorted, maybe catch up, get back right again before the Broncos head down to Logan, Utah for the very first ever Mountain West Gymnastics Conference Championships. We'll be there for that, so we'll bring that to you on Saturday. It should be thrilling to be down in Logan and, and see what happens it's felt like an, an abnormally long season for the Broncos. They've been on the road in very long stretches. They've been home in short stretches. It's just felt like it's all kind of built up to this, and then they got to go down to Logan to finish it, you know, follow Utah State, basically home. Um, but they'll have a few days to kind of catch up, rest, get right, and we'll see what happens in a week's time. And at this point, it's all maintenance. I mean, they're used to competing on these hard surfaces. Um, the shorter weeks going into conference will be less hard landings, more maintaining, conditioning to keep them strong, a lot of, a lot of treatment, a lot of rehab. I mean, we see tape all over the place here. So bodies are getting a little bit banged up and it's totally expected. This is a long season and unlike other sports, it's not a contact sport necessarily with another uh, <laughs> another person but I mean these events are merciless <laughs> certainly not a contact sport but a high impact sport totally a high impact sport I mean joints are definitely take a take a beating in this sport and I mean it's not just a during the season type of thing it's a year-round sport they maybe take a couple weeks off after school ends I mean some summertime at home but it is one of those sports you have to be here you have to be continuously training your skills and it's it's all about keeping that body happy and healthy as well absolutely Boise State we mentioned in the open ranked currently number 26 in the NQS all but assured you don't want to say anything is guaranteed all but assured a spot in the postseason but that ranking at the end of the season will just kind of dictate where they end up whether it's super local uh, or regional I guess I should say
to go across the Alabama or an LSU or somewhere like that. And with Oregon State being in that 17th spot, the top 16, they get based off of ranking and then down to the the rest of the 36 that make it to that postseason regionals meet, then they're placed based off of geography. So if Boise State's not in that top 16, they'll go wherever is the closest to make the travel more convenient. Um, and then from there, it's kind of a it's a clean slate. Rankings don't really matter once you're there. It's It's just who can hit the day of. So Brianna Brooks got sick of our conversation and went ahead and started her beam routine. <laughs> so here we go on Utah, or uh, excuse me, on beam for Utah State. She's a veteran. She has such long, pretty lines to watch. Taller gymnast. She just floats through front aerial into that fun one-arm backhand spring. We saw her crush it on the bars earlier, and she's fun to watch. Really elegant gymnast. Switch leap into that. Swing down, nice little dance series down on the beam, showing off her flexibility. Jumps a little off there, but she held on to it. Sometimes these meets feel like hurry up and wait. Everything goes quickly all at once, and then it's like, okay, longer waiting periods with this format. She's doing a good job handling the pressure. Into that dismount, really nicely done. Just a cherry on top with that stuck dismount. So one more look here at Brianna Brooks. And one more Aggie left to go on the beam, and that'll be Lexi Aragon, once again, the senior from Salt Lake City. I feel like we've been saying Brianna and Lexi's names forever <laughs> when they've been visiting Boise. Of course, uh, Boise State and Utah State, former conference mates, not only in the Mountain West, but also in the Mountain Rim, and prior to that, the WAC. So Boise State and Utah State, extremely familiar with one another, and so we see these gymnasts a lot throughout the season. Uh, in fact, sometimes twice, three mm -hmm. times, um, and this season no different than that, so. Never thought I'd make my way back down to Logan, Utah, but uh, <laughs> it'll bring back some nostalgia headed back down there next week to do the commentating be on the other side of the mat, per se. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to Saturday in the very first Mountain West Conference Championships down in Logan, and I believe uh, it should be a pretty good time down there and as the weather starts to turn, at least in Boise. It feels very springy outside. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll be the same down in Logan, but with our luck, it'll likely snow. So <laughs> we'll I see hope you, not. We'll see you down there. But Lexi Aragon now ready to go for Utah State, the final Aggie to compete on the beam in rotation number two. Following up that really nice routine from Brianna with that 9.85. Starting out with some pretty full 180 split leap series. Nails the dreaded full turn. And sets up for her series right here. Backhand spring layout, step out, floats through that nice height in that layout solid toss front to another really pretty split jump just working slowly through this routine you'll see gymnasts have a different cadence with every single routine some of them like to get up there super sharp super powerful get on get off type of thing others breathe their way through it and she did a really nice job keeping her composure not much you can take from that routine and a stuck landing to finish it off so she should be really really proud of that take one more look at lexi nice stuck dismount clicks those heels together awesome job It was Oregon State's 
Natalie Briones with this 9875 on the vault that led the way for the Beavers in rotation at number two. And then we moved over to Boise State's Malia Werlein on the bars with this 9875. She led the way for the Broncos with a 9875. The team score there for Boise State in rotation number two, 49075 on the bars. So not the best, but it had to count a fall in there, I think. And Malia started off the Broncos, so a, test or a testament to her for being able to put up that score, being the first in that lineup. And then it was Utah State's Brianna Brooks and Lexi Aragon, the two seniors leading the way for the Aggies with a pair of 9.85s to round things off on the beam for Utah State. Really nicely done from the Aggies on that event. They all looked really confident, and those standout performers were just exceptional. So Boise State in rotation number three will make their way to the beam. Utah State now on the floor and Oregon State on the bars. Currently the number seven team in the country on that event. So we look forward to seeing what kind of routines come out of the Beavers in rotation number three. As we get set to get underway, wrapping up one touch warmups here in about 10 seconds time. And Boise State had a pretty stellar beam go last week so we'll see if they can replicate that on the final home meet of the season for the Broncos before they head down to conference championships next week in Logan yeah they had two 995s in their lineup last week and you'll get to see Anna Ferguson it was her first time in the beam lineup ever and she came out and showed up and took advantage of that opportunity to receive a 995 on her first go around is absolutely incredible. There wasn't a dry eye in San Jose after her routine. Normally you kind of ease into it. You want to set the bar a little bit lower so you don't have like these high expectations, but when you almost score 10 in your first go, that's tough. This is Alyssa Villai, first to go for the Boise State Broncos, and maybe she puts together a 995 routine for us. It was just fun to watch on all of the events that she does. Really sharp landing there. Maybe a little bit of form in that back leg. She managed to not wobble. Nice, pulled that up really nicely. This is Jenna Eagles for Utah State on the floor. Jenna will set up for that first tumbling pass. Front layout to a front Rudy. Very well done. She floated in that second skill. Melissa is doing an awesome job in this routine. I haven't seen a bobble yet. She just has that dismount. Doing that last little bit of dance. Oh, almost got the stuck. Little hot for it, but I would say that's one of her better routines. She's pumped up. Jenna just finished her second pass. Double tuck. And Alyssa's fun because she's one of those gymnasts that really wears her emotions on her sleeve. She's hyped up. She's definitely hard on herself, which all these girls are, but when she's on, she's uh, she's definitely one of the the hype gymnasts on the team. Jenna Eagles on the floor. So Jenna Eagles wraps State. up for Sophia Utah State, State on the floor. Sophia Esposito bar. competed bars Oregon for State. Oregon State during that time. So Sydney Coe next to go for Boise State on the beam. And actually, let's take a look real quick at Sofia Esposito's bars routine for Oregon State. Beautiful handstand shape there. Blindfold, double tuck dismount. Move that right foot back so she could gain her balance. So Sydney Coe now on your screen next to go for Boise State on the beam. Oregon State's Natalie Briones will Next compete on the, on the bars, bars and Sydney on the floor Briones. for Utah State will be Angel Stewart. Started off with a Maloney right down to a Pac Salto. Beautiful pirouette on the low bar. Nice handstand there. Natalie Great 
double layout to finish the routine. Sydney nails that back handspring, kind of a pike, two feet. Jenna Eagles, floor score. She scored 9.25 on the floor for the Aggies. Next up on the floor for Utah State, Angel Stewart. So Angel Stewart on the left, Sydney Coe on the right. Into that leap series all the way down the beam, nicely done. Collins beam takes so much focus, so much precision. It's only four inches wide, so you gotta be pretty dang perfect. And these girls are doing a great job so far. Just the dismount, one and a half again. Kind of off to the side right there. She'll get a directional deduction as well as that little hop, but on the beam was really, really nice. She had a great starting pass on floor. You see your teammates chanting. It's always fun when these girls get to perform on floor. They know all their choreography and they really get into it and it's so fun to watch. This is Taylor DeVries that just popped into the right hand side of your screen. That's a really nice bar routine, super clean, long lines. Angel Stewart on the floor. Awesome finish for Angel. <laughs> You see she's pumped up. We'll see here that last pass, double tuck. Over rotated it a little bit. So, so Emma Loyam now on your screen. Uh, not the young lady in the vest, but the, <laughs> the young lady <laughs> in the Leo is Emma Loyam getting set to go on beam. Like there's some sort of maybe not judging discrepancy, just a little bit slow. All right, here she goes. Really fun to watch. One of the strongest. I feel like she has got such good form all the way down to her toe point. So there's Jennifer McMillan on the left hand side of your screen getting set to go for Oregon State on the bars. Does that triple series, a little bit of a bobble, but manages to keep it on. So hard to do Next those three the moves connected, the last Indiana. two without Brooks. hands, and she manages to stay on. And on the left-hand side of your screen, this is Utah State's Little Travis Scott remix. Nyla Morabito. Excuse me, this is Brianna Brooks. Bri <laughs> Nyla next to go after Brianna. Huge opening tumbling pass. That front double is an E level skill. And we see Emma's leap into her dismount, perfectly done right there. Nice way to finish off that routine. Just that bobble, but everything else was pretty perfect. So Brianna Brooks, little Cactus Jack in the floor routine in Oregon State's Sage Thompson on the bars. Oregon State, like Taylor mentioned earlier, they're seventh in the nation on this event. And you can see in this routine, it's so precise with her handstands and her form throughout. And of course, nailing that dismount, just incredible. And Brianna nails her last pass, that Rudy. Really fun to watch, fun dance, music, everything. She's happy about that Brianna one, so is her team. So fun to be a senior, and even though this meet's not at her home turf, it's it's still fun. They get another chance to go home, though. So conference, I mean, it's technically neutral, but it's a it's a home meet for sure in their own stadium. Emily Lopez pops onto your screen for the Broncos on beam. Awesome job right there, and 
we saw that uncharacteristic mistake happen on on uneven bars, but these gymnasts are so strong physically and even more so mentally, and balance beam is such a mental game, and Emily is not only up for the challenge, but fit for it, I would say. She is just so strong, even on her off days. This routine is going really well for her. I haven't seen any obvious deductions. Into that front toss, beautifully done. She just floats through it. Looks like she's doing it on the floor and that's exactly what you wanna see out of a good bar beam worker. Sage Thompson on uneven bars. She's tied for 19th in the nation on this event. Emily Lopez, Emily nailed that routine, and I'm sure that's just a sigh of relief. Her last routine in Extra Mile Arena. Bittersweet moment. She's so deserving of all the accolades she's been awarded this season and all the previous ones. So this is Nyla Morabito for Utah State on the floor. Huge double layout. We saw that in warm up a couple times and I think that was definitely one of her better ones. She got that chest up so, so hard to do. Pretty dance skill right there. Outside of the tumbling, there are requirements with leaps and if the gymnast decides to do two passes, there has to be some sort of forward moving. So you'll see them throw in a front tuck there once in a while. Right there, that leap pass. You see Jade Carey close out Oregon State. Beautiful Such a cool skill. pack salto, and she adds a full twist to it. She just makes every everything look effortless. Huge series from Pop on Beam. The best one I've seen her do in a while. Beautiful dismount there from Jade. Pop is really living up to her name. That was a high flying leap pass right there. Really solid routine so far for all the Broncos. And for this senior that we love to watch. She's been with the team for a long time. So one more look at Adriana Pop. Such a good routine from the senior. So fun to watch. Oh, getting a little emotional on yeah. senior night day matinee, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, th I mean, it's just so, it's such a hard sport and these girls make it look so easy and they have been doing it, I don't know, from two and three years old. It's not one of those sports you jump into when you're in high school or anything like that. It is a lifetime of this. So this is Carly Beeman competing in exhibition for Oregon State. Getting checked out by the trainer real quick. Yeah, she, I had a tough crash there. Did that Pike Jaeger. This is Utah State's Amari Evans on the right hand side of your screen. And now Boise State's Hannah Ferguson pops into the left hand side of your screen. Hopefully she's okay after that bar fall. And then Anna was the one that we mentioned her debut last week on this event in San Jose. She scored a 9.95 and we were talking about it earlier. Taylor was mentioning how normally you kind of build your way up to a score like that. And she just came out of the gate swinging. So awesome job for her. A little bit of a balance check right there. It's always fun when someone new breaks into the lineup and especially on an event like Balance Beam, it's, it's 
it's so different competing it than it is in practice. I mean, you get these nerves and got to really be able to calm your mind. A little bobble right there, but keeping things moving. Awesome floor routine so far from Utah State. Heads into her dismount. Nice stick, a little bit of a pike down. Don't think she'll be rewarded that 9.95, but really awesome job to see her solid, consistently getting in that lineup. Ground off, double tuck. Held on to her legs a little too, too long, unfortunately, so she had to kind of run out of bounds. And I believe if you go all the way out with both feet, it's quite a significant deduction, about three tenths, and then the Beavers have all those other steps as well. So Oregon State's Carly Beeman seems to be fine as Oregon State meets as a team, but she will not finish her routine, so that will round off rotation number three for the Beavers. A few more gymnasts left to compete, though, for Utah State on the floor. We still have yet to see Olivia Ostendorf and Chelsea Southam competing in exhibition. And one more exhibition routine for the Broncos as well as we find our way over to Boise State's Danny Schaefer, maybe the tallest gymnast in existence. <laughs> she waits for one more score to come in from Anna Ferguson's routine. So real quick, as I understand it, uh, I'm being told that there are no Next graphics on the screen for you all at home, so I'll try to give you guys a good idea of scores here real quick. So far as a team, this rotation for Oregon State, a 49-5-2-5 on the bars. Utah State thus far, 39-3-2-5, and for Boise State on the beam. This is missing Anna Ferguson's score, actually now counting Anna Ferguson's score, 49-1-5-0 for Boise State as a team in rotation number three. Next up on the floor. Nice series right there. New exhibition routine for Boise State. So again, good to get that practice. Clearly there's been some mix up in the lineup. So when we get to the end of season, it's always good to get in these last routines. Nice head release, shoot jump right there. Set up that leap pass. Beautiful opening tumbling run for the Aggies. She did that front layout to a Rudy. Finishes out with a fun dismount right there. One and a half forward. Really nice job for an exhibition. Nice leap pass there. So Olivia Ostendorf now takes center stage, the only gymnast competing inside Extra Mile Arena. Huge, Huge double back. Wow, she really got the angle right on that one and had to hop back a little bit, but so much power. Hung up the phone there. So one more routine for Utah State. We'll take one more look at Olivia. She had great power on those tumbling passes, which is what you want to see on this event. So we'll see Chelsea Southam here shortly competing in exhibition for Utah State once again. Your scores for rotation number three, Boise State on the beam, 49-1-5-0. Utah State thus far on the floor, not counting Olivia's score, 48-7-7-5. And on the bars for Oregon State, 49-5-2-5 for the Beavers. In today's announced and attendance here inside Extra Mile Arena is 2,048, which brings the 2024 season average for attendance to 26-36. And based on our records, that's the highest in program history. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not here today, we thank you though. If you have been to a meet this season, the atmosphere inside Extra Mile Arena has been fantastic this season. And you see these gentlemen, 
They even went and bought shirts. That's how you know a true <laughs> fan is in the building. They're moving around to get set. I think they're trying to find uh, some prime A position so that they can find Olivia a good Austin spot Dorf. next to the floor as Boise State nine will move there in rotation at number four. Nine, 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 seven, five for wow. Olivia Ostendorf. So that will bring their team total. Uh, once that pops into my sheet, I'll tell you exactly what pops in here. Uh, but in the meantime, Chelsea Southam getting set to go in exhibition now for Utah State. 9875, excuse me, for Olivia Ostendorf, not a 9975. Seer coach, who was a previous Florida gymnast, dancing with her. Nicely done right there. Front layout. Front Rudy. Found the landing. Nice and squared to the corner. Good direction on that. music and we'll be uh, hearing this music again next weekend. For the amount of times we do see these floor routines in a season, we should probably know the choreography as well. Whew. Chest was a little low on that landing. Nicely done. Bow to finish things off. Chelsea Good exhibition routine for the Aggies. So we'll take one last look at Chelsea Southam from Utah State as she gets the St. Patrick's Day chain. An awesome routine from Utah State to round out rotation at number three. We'll be right back in the scene in person. A standout routine to close out Oregon State on this end. She had beautiful and exciting skills on during her routine and it was awesome to watch and obviously scored Boise fairly States, well. Oh, sorry, Hope. Boise State's Adriana Pop 9-9 nine, nine on beam in rotation number three on senior day. Super well deserved. I mean, she was fly, flying high on that balance beam and really, really awesome form as well. And then it was Olivia Ostendorf who put together this 9875 floor routine for Utah State in rotation number three. And she too flew high on that floor, and I think that was probably the only thing they took away from that floor routine. Awesome job from Olivia. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back again. We apologize. We're having some technical difficulties, so it sounds like maybe we were on the other side of the Grand Canyon, and this camera <laughs> is about as far away as being on the other side of the Grand Canyon as well. So we'll try to bring you guys updates on scores as best we can because every single time we put graphics in the screen, that's when we don't sound so good. And if we're being honest, we're a little vain. We want to sound good and we want to make sure that you can hear us. So we're gonna go without graphics for a little bit in rotation number four and maybe we get it fixed. All right, maybe we don't. And if we don't, we apologize, but we'll try to bring you up to date as quickly as we can. So rotation number four is gonna see Boise State move over to the floor. Utah State will make their way to vault and Oregon State will make their way to the beam. Really quickly, team scores look like this. Through three rotations, Boise State 147 450. Utah State 147 050. And Oregon State leads the way 148 1. So Boise State has come to play the last few weeks that they've been at home when it comes to the floor routines. Two weeks ago when they were home and they made it to this event, they put together pretty much like a program high. We saw a lot of really good routines from Boise State on floor, so we'll see what they can do. But first, it's Sophia Esposito on beam for Oregon State, Brianna Brooks for Utah State on vault, and Alyssa Vulai will get things started on the floor for Boise State. I was watching Oregon State warm up, and specifically this routine is really impressive to watch. She just did a switch leap jump, which normally you kind of take a step into that um, 
She's been so powerful in every single event we've watched her. So Alyssa Goulay on the left-hand side, Sofia Esposito on the right-hand side of your screen currently. We love watching Alyssa on this event. We'll see here this huge combination, one and a half to a front full. So nicely executed. Let's take a look at Brianna Brooks on the right-hand side of your screen. Starting off with that Yurchenko full. Fourth and final time we'll see her tonight. She's just been super solid. <laughs> Jumps around and gives kind of a fun salute, but uh, awesome job right there, just that little hop back. Yeah, I was hopes that Alyssa is so fun to watch. Good dancer, shows it off and Fun to watch tumble as well. She'll set up here for that final tumbling pass. Beautiful double pike. Nicely done for the first Bronco on the floor. Setting the tone just like they want to. So Utah State's Peyton Gatzlaff on your screen on vault. And she'll do uh, that Yurchenko full as well. A little bit high on the table. She got it around, had to pike down just a little bit, which caused her to step back. Oregon With State's Sage Thompson, excuse me, on beam. With that Yurchenko full, you see a lot of them. I mean, it's the most commonly done probably skill in college gymnastics. And what sets it apart is, again, stuck landing, high flying, good distance. So that's what all these girls are striving for. Along with a skill like a back handspring layout step. But again, you'll see these common skills that are done in college gymnastics. So what's gonna set it apart with the judges is that form, that toe point, no wobbles all the things, and she's doing a good job with that so far. Next up on the floor for the Broncos, Blake Pascal. So Blake Pascal on floor for Boise State, set to go. Juliet Boyer just competed vault for Utah State. We'll see that in just a moment. Blake is one of those taller gymnasts, like we mentioned earlier, but she has beautiful lines. Great first tumbling pass there. Yeah, Double. she's super fun to watch. I always comment on a, a tall gymnast because whenever you hit over that five, three, five, four mark in gymnastics, it gets it gets harder to flip as fast and your center of gravity is a little bit higher. So if you can make it to the collegiate level at that height, I think it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Blake scored a 9.875 on this event last week. Coach Bird mentioned she's after the 9.9. Really clean performer, not a lot you can take and just kind of floats through her tumbling passes as well. You could tell she's just having a time out there. She's been smiling this whole routine. Wow, really awesome ball you just saw on the left of your screen from Olivia. She nailed that stuck landing. I think that's the second stuck landing along with Emily Lopez from Boise State, but watch right here in slow-mo. She gets really good height. We saw she's powerful on floor. Straight legs all the way. I mean, that was pretty perfect if you ask me. So over to beam where we find Oregon State's Olivia Buckner, the freshman from Riverton, Utah. Bobble on that full turn, balance beam. That's why I call it the dreaded full turn. You never know. Really nice job on that series. So 
So Emma Loyam will be up next on floor for Boise State as she gets set to go. Pretty jump series right there. When you release your head in a jump, it makes the level of difficulty go up. So that's a, I believe it, E level jump when she releases her head, takes her sight off of the balance beam. And Utah State's Nyla Morabito on vault. Huge Urchenko full. This Utah State team, you guys, has really, really, over the years with coaching staff, has really gotten good. Nice finish on that balance beam routine. Just a little bit of a hop forward, but you'll see that Yurchenko on the right side of your screen. Just that little step back, but everything else was nicely done. Emma Loyam on your screen for Boise State, the third Bronco to compete on floor this afternoon. Emma continues to be a top competitor on this event. She's tied the school record and has that difficulty. You'll see on that first tumbling pass, she did a whip. You'll usually see a back handspring, but she does that whip with no hands and then connects it to a double tuck. She's really tough on your body. I mean, you have to when you don't have your hands on the ground, you have to really punch at a sharper angle to get all of that backward momentum to shoot you straight up into the air. And she does an awesome job. Tina Bird always talks about how Emma is so efficient in workouts, but she also does numbers. And college gymnastics, it gets to the point where you do more quality over quantity, but Emma does both. Finishes up with that double pike. I just saw another Yurchenko full for Utah State. A little less amplitude, had to pike down just a slight bit. That was Utah State's Angel Stewart, and now we skip over to Ariana Young. Sorry, Jennifer McMillan for Utah State on the beam, or excuse me, Oregon State on the beam. Starts out with that toss front, a little bit of a wobble. Held on with her toes. Does it again into that swing down. I believe she repeated that skill because that counts as her series. And if you don't connect your series, it's a knock off that start value. So she was smart enough and able to get back into it and execute it really nicely. Pretty switch leap. She's got really nice form. Every event we've seen Jennifer on this evening <sighs> is today. <laughs> Keep kicking myself. We're so used to commentating at night, but daytime meet. Angel Stewart, 9.725 on the ball for Utah State. Just that dismount. Very nicely done. So Utah State is done for the afternoon. Their team score on the vault, a 48-9 led by a 9-9-2-5 from Olivia Ostendorf. So Utah State has wrapped up their afternoon and here comes Elena McGovern. And real quick, we mentioned a few gymnasts ago, Blake Pascal was after a 9-9 this week. 9-9 for Blake on the floor for Boise State. I'd like to say we manifested that for her, <laughs> hopefully on this broadcast. Beautiful first pass. Elena is so fun to watch. She's really powerful. She does it with a smile on her face all the time. She's been in this lineup all three years as a Bronco. And we've witnessed her get better and better and really come into her own on this event. And she's incredibly smart, as are most of these gymnasts. You'll it's a, it's a trend with these athletes. They're not just athletically so talented, but they're pretty disciplined in every area of, of life, including their academics. So it'll, it's fun to watch what they do after they're done with their athletic career. She's actually graduating this year, but in her senior year, she's gonna work on her master's degree. Super impressive. Big double tuck, just a little bit of an awkward landing, kind of 
popped back there, but awesome routine from Elena. Elena McGovern on the floor for the Broncos. So Elena McGovern was the fourth gymnast to compete for the Broncos in rotation at number four. And one more look at Elena's pass here. She had that height in the air, but chest was a little low, so she had to take that scoot back. So now you see Oregon State's Ariana Young waiting. There's a little bit of a judge's discrepancy on the beam, so she is just waiting as the judges confer with one another. And that yeah. may be from what I mentioned earlier. When you have to repeat a skill, um, sometimes comes into play with the start value. So that may be what they're talking about. They flash the start value at the beginning. And if one judge has a different start value than the other, then they'll come together and confer and talk about what they both saw and then come to a mutual agreement, hopefully in a timely manner. So she doesn't have to wait a super long time. But you see her there just keeping moving. Wish I could read lips <laughs> see what the judges are saying. So I mentioned that the judges were conferring. That's, uh, that's not what they're doing. They're having a conference uh, to confer something is to give something to someone. So they are not doing that. <laughs> Did you just look up that? I just the looked definition? that up because I thought that that was the wrong word and I knew it was. And then so. I just followed suit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Boise State's Anna Ferguson now on the floor. She had her first lineup appearance last week on floor. She's been exhibitioning a couple times, building her way into the lineup. I would say that's kind of her MO this season. She's made her way into not just floor, but balance beam as well. It's an ode to her hard work and so fun when it pays off. Combination pass for a handspring nice front down. layout to a front full. She had a great landing there. An opposite of Blake, Anna's one of our fun sized gymnasts. She's so adorable <laughs> to watch out there, but. Just the perfect build for a gymnast, tiny and, and short to the ground so she can do all these high flying moves. Last pass here, that double tuck. Really nicely done. So difficult to end with. I saw, I saw a little fist pump from head athletic trainer, Kata Shimada. <laughs> when you get a fist pump from Kata, you know you've done something right. Oh, yeah. He's a pretty stoic guy when it comes to competition. <laughs> so true. <laughs> So only one more Bronco yet to compete. And it will be a Bronco that we have yet to see this year. That'll be Brantley Lucas making her season debut. Last time at Extra Mile, she did exhibition for the first time, which was fun to see. And, and again, all these mix-ups in the lineup without Courtney this week and uh, just a couple of changes. But it gives these girls an opportunity. I mean, that's why they chose Boise State. That's why they got recruited here. They're obviously exceptional gymnasts. It's really hard in college. It's not a big, uh, not a lot of people make it to this level. So it's a, just a true ode to their hard work and their ethic for keeping going and it's proving to work. So we'll see how well Ariana Young, the senior from San Mateo, California, has stayed in it. She sat through two floor routines before she was able to start her beam routine. Which is a long time, especially when balance beam is the event that you're getting on to. Really nice front aerial to that beat jump. Currently will set up for first pass. Double pike. Beautiful. Unfortunately, her layout step out looked really, really high and nice. I was not able to see her feet from my viewpoint, but uh, she was just a little off and had to take that ball. She has a really nice toe point and all, goes all the way up on her releve, which the judges are looking at as well. Beautiful jumps. Really fun to watch. 
Nice second pass there from Brantley. This is the Broncos' last event and Brantley's first appearance today. So she has been waiting a long time. And that was a really nice finish on balance beam. Unfortunate fall because the rest of that routine was pretty much perfect. Last pass here. Double tuck. Chest was low. But like we mentioned, that's so difficult to end with. And she was able to get that on her feet. But great job from Brantley. First time officially competing in the lineup on this event. Gosh, she had the height, just maybe didn't get a good grab on her legs to get all the way around with that chest up. But awesome job for her first time when it counts. So one more gymnast to go for Oregon State. And it'll be Jade Carey, the junior from Phoenix, Arizona, to round things off for the Beavers on beam. And, uh, I don't know if I'd want anyone else following after uh, a mistake on any event. I mean, we've already talked about her accolades and her career at such a young age, and she is as, as good as they come, being able to compete at that national level and then at the collegiate level as well. And I'm, I'm sure it's fun for her. I mean, gymnastics is such a, again, lifetime sport, and it's, it's a tough sport, and in that, especially in that elite setting, it's so serious, and it's really cool to see these girls come and have such a camaraderie with their teammates and be able to really enjoy the sport um, for what it is and display their talents in such an awesome environment. So while judges converse once again on the beam, let me run you through really quickly what team scores look like at the moment, uh, not counting Brantley Lucas's score. Boise State will finish the afternoon with a 196-750 as a team. They will finish rotation number four with a 49-3 on that event. Utah State is done for the afternoon. 195-950. They finished with a vault of 48-9 as a team. And before Jade's score, Oregon State, well, without before Jade and Ariana's score, Oregon State currently at a 186-850 as Jade gets started for the Beavers. All eyes are on her. And she's very much used to <laughs> this pressure along with a lot higher levels of pressure. Sets up four. Front aerial, beautifully done. Back handspring layout, step out. Perfect form. It's cool to see an Olympian commit to a school like Oregon State. And usually you see those Olympians going to SEC schools and the UCLA's. But Oregon State is right up there in that top 20 spot. So really cool to get that variety. Quick routine, on and off. Does her job and maybe just a little bit of a shuffle with those feet, but again, as solid as they come. So prior to Jade's score, Oregon State with a 196-2 for the meet. So I would imagine that that would change because that is currently counting Ariana Young's 935. So surely Jade's score will be a little bit higher than that. One more look at Jade. And that will finish off rotation number four. We'll take a quick break and tally them up and come back with some senior day festivities, some awards, and we'll come back and let you know exactly what's happening in the meet. Thanks for being with us. Stay tight. Back inside Extra Mile Arena, the meet on senior day here in Boise is done. Unofficially team scores right now. Boise State 196-750, Utah State 195-950, and Oregon State Eeks ahead, 196.775 on the back of Jade Carey and that final beam routine for the Beavers. So now uh, we'll wait just a moment uh, and we'll kick it over to our PA announcer, Jeremy Peterson, who will read you awards and then we'll come back and do a little bit more breakdown. But a solid showing from Boise State. We knew coming into the meet that they were going to be a little light, short. There were there were some gaps maybe in the lineup with some injuries or some folks that are maybe not as healthy as they could be as the season wears on. It's sort of a war of attrition at the moment. But a 196 is a great score. 
we saw good routines and we saw some underclassmen step up today for Boise State. Absolutely, and that's what you want to see at the end of the season. It's inevitable. You're going to have bumps and obstacles along the way, and this is how you want a team to respond. I mean, they're getting under pressure in these settings, and you see the new faces start to shine through, and they're building their confidence, and it's exactly what you want. It's unfortunate that some of the key players throughout season maybe have to sit out for a meet or two, but uh, they're resting their bodies, and hopefully they'll be back for that postseason. Well, we'll chat a little bit more about that, but let's kick it over to our in-house PA announcer, Jeremy Peterson, who will read the awards for today's ceremony. They have made for their respective teams and wish them the very best in all their future endeavors as we introduce the seniors, first for Oregon State. Congratulations to Ariana Young. And now we recognize the seniors from Utah State, Lexi Aragon. Juliet Boyer. Brianna Brooks. Jenna Eagles. Olivia Ostendorf. And Angel Stewart. On behalf of the Boise State Gymnastics family, we congratulate these seniors, and we wish you and your programs the very best in all your future endeavors, the Oregon State and Utah State seniors. <laughs> Bronco fans, we will recognize our Senior Day celebration and the conclusion of the announcement of today's overall team scores. So while Jeremy Peterson gets his score sheets uh, sorted, we had a little bit of an adjustment, as you may have seen on the, the screen there. I don't know if the scores were up. But Oregon State's final score now today, unofficially, 196-925. So now let's go back to Jeremy Peterson for the awards. This is the awards and our overall team scores. Fans, our individual results this afternoon on vault. And a tie for third place with a score of 9.875 from Oregon State, Natalie Briones, and from Boise State, Emma Loyam. And our winners this afternoon on vault with a score of 9.925. From Utah State, Olivia Ostendorf, and from Boise State, Emily Lopez. Here are our individual results on bars in a tie for third place with a score of 9.9. .9. From Utah State, Brianna Brooks. From Oregon State, Sage Thompson. And from Oregon State, Natalie Briones. In second place with a score of 9.925 .9 from Oregon State, Jennifer McMillan. And our winner this afternoon on bars with a score of 9.95 from Oregon State, Jade Carey. Our results this afternoon on beam in third place with a score of 9.875 from Boise State, Emily Lopez. In second place with a score of 9.9 .9 from Boise State, Adriana Pop. And our winner this afternoon on beam with a score of 9.925 from Oregon State, Jade Carey. Our results this afternoon on floor in a tie for first place with a score of 9.9 .9 
From Oregon State, Sofia Esposito. From Oregon State, Caitlin Garcia. And from Boise State, Blake Pascal. Our all-around results this afternoon with a cumulative score of 39.075 in third place from Oregon State, Sofia Esposito. In second place with a cumulative score of 39.3 from Oregon State, Sage Thompson. And our winner this afternoon in all-around with a cumulative score of 39.325 from Utah State, Brianna Brooks. And fans, our final team standings with a team score of 195.950. The Aggies from Utah State. With a score of 196.750, your Boise State Broncos. And with a team score of 196.925, the Beavers are from Oregon State. Well, there you have it. Once again, Oregon State today's winner, 196.925. I mentioned right in between Jeremy there real quick that there was a little bit of an adjustment. Uh, Oregon State picks up 0.2 tenths of a point. Uh, moving their beam score to 48.775 as a team. That was the routine of, or excuse me, 48.825 as a team. That was the routine of Jennifer McMillan, who was then scored as a 9.625. So again, these scores unofficial. So Oregon State wins today 196.925, Boise State 196.750, and Utah State rounds it out. 195950. Again, it is senior day. It is the final regular season meet of the 2024 gymnastics season, at least for Boise State and for all of the teams here today. In a week's time, actually in six days, on Saturday, Boise State will head down to Logan as the, Logan hosts the very first ever Mountain West Gymnastics Conference Championship. That'll be March 23rd at 7 p.m. You can find it right here on the Mountain West Network. We'll actually be in Logan for that. But in the meantime, in those six days, what does Boise State need to do to, well, what can they do to get ready for that meet? Rest and recovery and hone in on the little details. I mean, it's it's a short turnaround with it not even being a full week, and they'll travel down a little bit earlier. Um, I believe there's a practice day before conference, so that's a little bit different as well. They'll come in the day before, get used to the equipment, kind of gives them a little bit of an edge, just getting used to equipment's different every time you travel, so that'll be a nice thing to do. So, I mean, they'll have a rest day tomorrow. They'll probably come into the gym and have their meat prep, one full day of practice, and then they'll be on the road, so it's all about rest, recovery, eating well, making sure you're healthy. They, are, they know what they need to do and um, honing in on those tiny details. And at this point, they've done all the numbers. It's just making sure they do quality turns that gives them confidence so they'll perform their best at the championship this Saturday. Well, let's take a look at the best of the best from this afternoon, and let's start it off on the vault. It was Boise State's Emily Lopez and Utah State's Olivia Ostendorf. As you heard, they tied on this event with a 9.925. I'm glad they both got to wear that crown because not one was better than the other. They were both exceptional, and you'll see right here again. Two stuck landings with that Yurchenko full. It's usually a one and a half that wins it because of that bump and start value, but... They left no room for the judges to take any deduction. On bars and beam, it was the Jade Carey show from Oregon State with a 995 and a 9925 respectively. And then on the floor is Oregon State's Caitlin Garcia, Oregon State's Sofia Esposito, and Boise State's Blake Pascal that all tied with a 99. But that will wrap up the 2024 season here in said extra mile arena once again. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an awesome season. We've been more than thrilled to bring it to you. We apologize today for the technical difficulties, but man, do we have a lot of fun doing this. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back in 2025, but catch us next week down in Logan first on March 23rd at 7 p.m. right here on the Mountain West Network. We'll be in Logan to bring you that meet, the very first ever Mountain West Conference Championship as Boise State chases a conference title once again. For everybody in the truck and our production crew, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being with us. We'll see you in a season's time. Once again, 
Oregon State, 196-925. Boise State, 196-750. Utah State, 195-950. We'll see you next year.